Hey everyone, welcome back to POA for you. It's Leroy again, and today we are going to go through income and expenses. Uh, someone wrote in to ask me to help them understand a bit more about this topic and also has given me a few questions on that. So I'm going to go through the question today, and hopefully, in answering those questions, I'll give you some background and some thinking around it, and hopefully, this will help you guys. All right, so let's get right into it. So on the left hand side, um, Chin Li Trading is the company um, that has a financial year end uh, that ends on the 31st of October. Now this is important because you need to know um, that the business first day of financial year is on the 1st of November and the last day of the financial year is on the 31st of October and later I'll show you why that's important. Now there are two transactions that are given you. First is they've paid advertising expenses by check, 7,800. And second, they have received by check uh, rent for 10,800. Now, uh, at the last day of the year, so 31st October, this is the last day of the year, they also said that despite these two transactions, uh, for example, despite paying 7,800 for advertising, the business still owes $600 for advertising. And the rent that they received for 10,800 was for the period of 1st of January to 31st of December. And I explained to you the implications of this additional information here, but let's look at part A first. So part A, what's the accounting theory that supports the income uh, accounting for expense and income? Uh, there are several accounting theories. Go look at my video on accounting theories, all right? Uh, search in my channel and I've explained all the different types of accounting theories, how to remember them and what are some of the links that you could just find it in Google to explain, uh, to understand a bit more on. But um, the, uh, the accounting theory that supports this is the accrual concept of accounting for uh, income and expenses. And this accrual concept basically says that you should be accounting for income when they are earned and expenses when they are incurred. So this is uh, going to be different than if you are accounting for these expenses and income when cash exchanges hands. So uh, as an example, if you're running a business and you have utility bills, right? Um, and utility bills sometimes are built to the business one month later. So if I am Chin Li and I end my year 31st of October, in the month of October, I would actually have incurred, let's say $200 of utility bills, right? And uh, the utility bills will only come in in November. But for the financial year that ends in October, I have to make sure that I take into account that $200 of utility bills that I've incurred for the month of October, right? Although I've not paid for it yet. So that has to be reflected as my expenses, okay? So um, that being said, this is my draft answers. Um, like I said to you guys, this is the accrual basis of accounting. And ex the concept basically is saying that expense and income should be recognized when they are incurred and earned, right? So the, the keyword is incurred and earned and not when they cash exchanges hands, uh, i.e. when they are paid or when they when you receive the money, okay? Uh, the next one, name one stakeholder uh, and the decision that they might make by using Chinese trading accounting information. So the stakeholder that I've chosen is the bank. And the bank often would use business and uh, would ask the businesses to provide their financial information, which is a statement of financial position and statement of financial performance to assess the financial health of the business uh, when the business approached the banks to ask for a loan. And this is so that the bank will not, uh, is able to see whether this is a high risk business. This business is a viable business. This business is a healthy business. Because if it's not healthy business, then when the bank lends the money out, then it's less likely they, they will get it back and the banks don't want to be in that position, right? The next question, part C, ask us to prepare journal entries for accounting of advertising and rent for the year ended. So uh, in, there, there are two parts when you prepare the journal entries. One is you have to prepare for this table and also you have to prepare the journal entries for the additional information here, okay? So let's look at advertising first. Advertising, when you pay 7,800 for advertising expense by check, 
you think of two things, right? The journal entries, um, that bit, you know, something and credit something, those descriptions are always normally in the lines here. So advertising is a keyword, so it's an advertising expense. And check is a keyword as well. Anything that is paid by check or received via check is always to cash it back, right? So in this example, what I've done is I've debited advertising expenses and credited cash at bank. Now I did this because uh, advertising expense or any type of expense, they are debit in nature and if you paid for an expense, that means the expense actually, advertising expense actually gone up. So to record an increase in advertising expense, you debit it and uh, cash at bank is an asset, assets are debit in nature and if you paid uh, something out. If you if you made a payment, that means your cash at bank actually goes down as a result of the payment. So to record a decrease uh, for an asset that's a debit in nature, you credit cash at bank. So there are some principles on this. I got a video on uh, journal entries. Please go watch it if you uh, still want to get more understanding on this. Now, uh, the next set of journal entries is really uh, about this additional information here, right? So they say, despite doing this payment of 7,008, 600 is still owing. So when they tell you 600 is still outstanding, it means that you right away you would know that you have a liability. And then uh, at the same time, uh, your expenses for advertising is more than this 7,800 because there's additional $600 that you have actually incurred but you have not paid. So the double entry here would be debit advertising expense because you are accounting for an additional $600 of advertising expense that you have not paid and credit expense payable because these are advertising uh, expenses that you have not paid for so you have to account for that liability. The next set of double entry or journal entries that you need to prepare is for the rent. Uh, now rent, you receive check for 10,800 for rent so you would debit um, the uh, rent, no, sorry, debit, you receive check, right? So you, when you receive check, you receive payment in the bank and your cash at bank balance will go up. Cash at bank balance are debit in nature, so you uh, would debit it to record a uh, increase in cash at bank, um, in the cash in the bank, right? And you credit an income because this uh, rent income, because income is credit in nature, any uh, uh, to, to record an increase in income, you credit rent income. Now, I would also then book uh, do the journal entries for this. They say rent received for this period was 10, 000, uh, of 10,800 was for January 1st to December 31st. Now, therein comes the importance of this financial year and 31st October. So it tells you that um, from here, you would know that the person that paid Chin Li the rent uh, was paying a few months in advance, right? Because um, 31st of October, if the period is ended and the person has paid until December, that means they've paid the, for the month of November in advance and for the month of December in advance. So two two months in two months in advance, yeah. So out of the 10,800, which was for 12 months, they paid two months in advance. So you have to record the. Uh, this advance payment uh, of income that Chin Li has received. Now, if you have received money that you have not earned yet, then that is a liability. And in the financial statements, this is known as uh, income received in advance and liabilities are credit in nature. So you would have to credit income received in advance and you would debit rent income. And why do you debit rent income? Because what you are essentially saying is out of this 10,800, I can only recognize a certain portion of this as my rent income for the year, for the financial year, right? And that is uh, 1,800 lesser than 10,800 because 10,800 is the full amount that you receive. But then 1,800 is for the next financial period. Right, so you have to debit rent income to bring the rent income down. Rent income is credit in nature, so to bring it down, you debit it. Okay, okay. Now, uh, having said this, um, you the part D is to talk about the prepare an extract of the statement of financial performance. Right, so um, you you need to understand the structure of the statement of financial performance, and to do so, you look at your syllabus outline, whether it's seven zero eight six or seven zero eight seven. 
um, you would have a syllabus outline that goes and I'm going to bring it down here um, that goes you know and, and this is the syllabus uh, thing you can download it from the internet yeah um, and I'm going to just push it uh, just to show you the cover page, you know, it's a syllabus for this is for O-Level 7087 and right around the last few pages, you would see an extract of the Statement of Financial uh, Performance and um, Statement of Financial Position. So this is a Statement of Financial Performance where you have sales, you have other income, you have uh, uh, less expenses, right? So in the going back to the question, Statement of Financial Performance, what I've done is uh, I have prepared this in advance, of course, and you know, basically you would record a rent income of 9,000. And why 9,000? Because I take 10,800 that I've, the chinny has received as payment, less of the payment in advance of 1,800, just following the concept of these journal entries. And then less other expenses and the other, within other expenses, there's so many types of different expenses, but in this extract uh, relevant for this case, it will be advertising expense. And why is it 7,200? It's because I take 7,000, mm, 7,200, sorry, sorry. It should be plus, it should be 8,400. Um, I will take 7,800 as what I paid, plus the amount that I'm still, I'm still owing despite paying 7,800, okay? And therefore I have for that period of um, that financial period incurred 8,400 of advertising expense. 7,000 has 800 has been paid, but 600 is still owing. Hope that makes sense. Then uh, the next part of the question, last part of the question actually asks for a statement of financial position. And statement of financial position, again, I'm going to this syllabus, out, syllabus outline. It shows you also the, um, the, the, what the rough template should be. And uh, Chin Li is a sole proprietor, so you should have non-current asset, current asset, owner's equity, non-current liability, and current liability. But you only need to prepare an extract for this question. And in this, you have, if you look at the journal entries, you would have oh, um, expense payables, you would have income, uh, rent income as well. So what I've done is I have prepared this. Okay, under the current liability section, I put in the expense, the payable. Expense payable would be, you know, um, actually advertising. I'm gonna put here in brackets, advertising. Uh, and income uh, received in advance would be rent. These are all liabilities, so they fall under the current liability section. Actually, come to think of it, I should put in something for bank as well. I don't think these two, these are the two, uh, these are the only two bank transactions. So I, actually I won't put it in, otherwise there'll be a, a odd bank balance, but I think this will suffice for this question since it's two marks, so two entries. Okay, so I, I hope you guys uh, uh, enjoyed this video. It's uh, a bit about, you know, income and expense with a question example, but uh, in my in my channel, there's a, there are concepts on accounting theories. There's also a concept on prepaid expenses. Um, and uh, I think there are some question papers around paper two, question one, that could help you uh, get uh, more familiar with this concept. If there's any questions, please feel free to ask me. And if you've got a friend who you think uh, can benefit from this video, let them know. It's free resource for everybody. All right, take care for now.